Hey everybody, welcome to Friday Fruit Clips, episode number 21. This is of course my weekly series where I expose the false prophets and the false teachers. And yes, you may detect a little mockery. That's okay. False prophets are certainly worthy of being mocked. So I've got some pretty good clips picked out for you this week. And we're going to go through these. So, you ready? Here we go. All right, so first up we're looking at Chad Thomas. Uh, Chad, of course, owns the YouTube channel Watchmen on the Wall 88. And Chad promotes and teaches the unbiblical pre-tribulation rapture. And Chad does it heavy. He goes hard when it comes to this false doctrine. And many of you might disagree with me, and that's fine. But I'm going to show you today, in fact, why this teaching is going to be very harmful to many Christians, uh, even from now and into the future. And so we're going to listen to a clip from Chad. It's about a minute long, and then I'm going to comment. So here we go. Greetings to all of you, and God bless you today. Hope everybody's doing well. Folks, I'm going to keep saying it every time I come on here. Jesus is coming, and Jesus is coming one day very, very, very soon. Folks, Things are moving so fast, pointing to the soon rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ and the commencement of Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation period. Folks, the rapture of the church is about to happen. Why am I saying it's about to happen? Because the tribulation period is casting its shadow on the earth right here and right now. So no, I'm not going to come out here and tell you the rapture has to be this month, this day, this year. We don't do that on this channel. What I am saying is I'm looking around this world and I see the tribulation period casting its shadow on the earth. And that's how I know the rapture is about to happen. Because the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ needs to occur before the Antichrist can be revealed and before the tribulation period can begin. Now, so what Chad's doing here is a consistent teaching which is antithetical to actual biblical scripture. If you caught that last line that he said, and I'm going to read it to you, and you can play it back and listen. He says, because the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ needs to occur before the Antichrist can be revealed and before the tribulation period can begin. Did you hear that? Now, friends, I know maybe many of you like Chad, but what he said here is spectacularly unscriptural, unbiblical, and flat-out wrong. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we can read this together. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. My goodness, Scripture clearly tells us that we will not see the return of Christ, specifically until that man of sin be revealed. But Chad, just out of Nowhere in particular, you know that he didn't quote you any scripture, right? He just comes out and says, because the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ needs to occur before the Antichrist can be revealed. But we just read what scripture said. So where is Chad getting this? Well, we don't know. He's just pulling it out of his, what, feelings? This is what he does, though. But either way, again, the only word that keeps coming back to me is spectacular. This is a spectacular failure. This man is teaching the opposite of what our Bible teaches us. Now, some of you might say, well, this has to do with the rapture. Well, it actually doesn't say that. 
nor can Chad produce any verse in the entirety of the Bible which does say that. It is speculation at best, but it is false. Now here is the harm that Chad's doing. Hundreds of thousands of people who follow this person now will not recognize the Antichrist specifically because Chad taught them that he will not show up before Christ's return or before the pre-tribulation rapture. Think about that. Chad is disarming anyone who would listen from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Chad is saying, no, 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 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, it's wrong. Listen to me. We'll be out of here before the, I know, folks, I know the Bible says that first the Antichrist will be revealed. No, nope, don't listen to that. Listen to me. I'm Chad. I do my videos from my car, so I'm important. And I'm telling you, we're going to be raptured first. It's just indescribable to me. It's, it's, I can't even believe it. And, and But we were warned of these times. We were warned that, yes, delusion is coming strong. People are going to throw away sound doctrine. You can check that out in 2 Timothy 4.3. In lieu of fables, and here we are listening to Chad disarm Christians with actual, unscriptural, unbiblical teachings. It is, again, amazing. Now let's look at the other part, the other harm that's being done. Look at this video right here. This video from three years ago. This is from August of 2020. Look at the title here. September's coming. Buckle up. Well, we don't set dates here, but buckle up, right? So what harm is this doing? Well, Chad, again, who goes heavy on the pre-tribulation rapture. This is his whole platform, by the way. He gets people worked up and people get all excited. September comes, September goes. Now, this might have been the 20th or 30th video where Chad is hyping the masses. They get all frenzied. They think the rapture is going to happen, and it doesn't happen. So what happens? Well, they get discouraged, and they walk away from their faith. Their faith gets shipwrecked. Why? Well, because of Chad. Teaching a false doctrine, an unbiblical doctrine. People get shipwrecked. And it's just, for me, for to see this stuff happen unnecessarily, it's just terrible. If Chad would just come out and preach the gospel, encourage people to be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ, stay within the parameters of biblical doctrine, it's sad that I have to say that. Uh, that's the way it's supposed to be, and it would work out wonderfully. Uh, but he doesn't do that. He's a hype man. And so, Chad, if you're listening, I would ask you to stop. Stop doing this. Shut down your channel and have a seat in the pew and learn. Go back and read your Bible, Second Thessalonians, uh, Matthew 24. Very important. And uh, for those of you that are following Chad, again, I don't hate Chad. I pray for Chad. Um, but seeing this, you can understand how this does damage. And um, uh, I would certainly encourage anyone to uh, mark this guy and avoid him because he is unbiblical. My goodness, what does it say about a person who teaches against the very words of the Bible, and yet claims to be Christian. It's astonishing. So with that, let's move on. All right, so next up we've got Andrew Whalen. Now here's a rising false prophet, and he's going to tell you a story right now that is quite astonishing. And so with that, we're going to listen to this clip and we'll comment when he's done. And to create, so for instance, um, one occasion down in... Uh, uh, it was in Texas. Okay. And I'll tell you, this is kind of a neat story. Yeah, I love it. But in Texas, um, my wife and I, we were just in a season where we were in some uh, need financially. We were in a place and um, it was a frustrating place. And so we woke up, uh, both of us at three in the morning, gripped with anxiety. I actually had panic. We actually had a panic Wow. Both say this way, we both woke up at three in the morning with panic attacks. Wow. And, you know, I'm sure in some level there was some witchcraft going on. Mm -hmm. But 
but there definitely was like in the natural, we were like, we have all these, all these payments we got to make and we don't have this and we don't have that. You know, every mountain of uh, oppression started to come on us. And instantly my wife hears the Holy Spirit say, the angels are here, put them to work. And she tells me this. She goes, I just heard the Lord say, put the angels to work. And I said, well, what are we supposed to do? We prayed and we felt the Lord say, commission the angels to go get you uh, people, to go get someone to hire you um, for intercession uh, for their business. So (laughs) we said, okay. We said, Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, uh, we come through you. And we just commission our angels right now. And we said, angels, we know you're here. We commission you by the word of the Lord to go get someone to hire us uh, for intercession for their business. And so that was at three in the morning. We prayed for about 10 minutes and about 10 minutes later. So uh, around 3.30 a.m., I get a text message from a stranger who says, uh, Andrew, I, uh, my wife met you, you know, uh, several years ago and I just got your number from her phone. I'm sitting here in prayer. I woke up at three in the morning. I'm sitting here <laughs> in prayer. And he said, and I just heard the voice of the Lord say, call Andrew, hire him to pray for your business Whoa. and pay him double what he asks. Whoa. Okay, so <laughs> this is where do I start? There's so many things wrong here, other than the fact that this is completely, completely unbiblical. Um, and I, I do want to interject here. I want to give a shout out to Rachel Carpenter, who uh, pointed me in the direction of this clip. But okay, so Andrew Whalen tells this story, which of course is fabricated. It's not true. Uh, look at his look at his face. Uh, there's uh, you know, I, I'm sorry, my mind can't begin to even process what he just said. Hiring somebody to pray for your business. Hiring or thinking that you can hire somebody to pray for your business, or for that matter, anything. Honestly, I, I think Andrew Whalen is a little touched in the head. And I'm not saying that to be mean. Uh, again, unbiblical. It doesn't work like that. And this man is getting on stage in front of thousands and thousands of people teaching stuff like this and what's going on here what where, what why doesn't steve here say anything mr dr evil here he goes oh wow how about new steve are you gonna tell andrew that this is unbiblical you can't pay somebody to pray for your prosperity or for that matter anything last time i checked it doesn't work like that It's not a biblical thing at all. No, 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 it's not. But his story though, right? I'm sure it triggered many business owners. They perked up and said, can can we do that? Can Can we pay a Christian to pray for our success? Oh my goodness, this is this is easy street. And likewise, Christians, can they hire themselves out? Like Andrew is saying here, oh, thank God our money problems are stopped. I'm gonna, I'm going to work, honey. Oh, where are you going? Oh, I'm gonna go pray for the Wilsons. They're paying me double because I'm super anointed. I don't know. It's not a thing though. But where do you stop? Where do you draw the line? Well, honey, what, what do you, what, what happened to our uh, savings? We're down five thousand dollars. Well, I had to pay the Whalen boy. He's praying for our business, so we'll recoup that soon enough. We got Andrew Whalen on the prayer job. He's, he better be praying right now. I mean, goodness, you see where this goes? This is crazy. Well, honey, while while you're paying the Whalens for our business, can you also give them a little extra and pay them for, I don't know, softer skin and more youthful glow? Can we uh, can we pay them to pray for that for us? I don't see why not. Let's just do that. Can can we pay the Whalens to uh, pray for uh, my promotion? 
Why not? Where do you, where do you draw the line? How about salvation? Can we can we pay you, Andrew? Can you can you pray for my salvation so I can go out and live like a devil and you know, but your prayers will just keep me in good with God because we paid you to do it. This has to be the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But also, you can see where this is going to appeal to the laziness of people, but also the greed. Wow, unbelievable. Whoa. whoa. That's what I said was, whoa. Yeah. I couldn't, you know, I was like, oh my goodness. So, you know, I'm like high five in the angels. I'm like, good job, you guys. Come on, you know. Oh, well, I missed that detail. Maybe, maybe that makes it all true. He was, he was in the presence of the angels, high fiving them. Hey, way to go, Michael. You really came through for me, Gabriel. High five. You guys are my friends. Let's go pray for people and make some money. That doesn't sound evil at all. That sounds legit. No. Okay. So anyway, pray for Andrew Whalen to knock off this nonsense. It is just so shallow, materialistic, and unholy. It is not of God. Pray that Andrew Whalen would stop this. Uh, but in the meantime, certainly avoid him, mark him, and reject his teachings because this is not the Holy Spirit. This is evil. So let's move on. All right, so next up we've got Carol Arnott. She is going to tell you sort of a Jesus is my boyfriend, Jesus is my husband type story. And again, it's sick, it's twisted, it needs to be exposed. So that's why we're featuring this on this episode of Friday Fruit Clips. So we're going to play this, we're going to comment as we go, and get ready for this one. Actually, before I play the clip in question, I want to give you an idea of who Carol Arnett is. First, I want to play you a clip from a couple of weeks ago where she is here with Kenneth Copeland. And, oh boy, get ready for this because this is cringe. Okay, so you can see just absolute buffoonery. It's a clown show, and yeah, she's yoked up with uh, Kenneth Copeland. So, again, just showing you the obvious. But she ran around on stage, you know, as they pretended like she could point at people and, you know, slay them in the spirit because she had the power of the Holy Ghost in her finger or in her microphone or something like that. It's just childish. So now you have an idea of who she is. All right, so let's listen to the other clip. I had this most incredible encounter. All of a sudden, I was in this beautiful meadow, and Jesus walked up to me and handed me a bouquet of lily of the valley. Now, they're tiny little flowers. They smell just beautiful. And so when he did that, I knew what he meant. So let me go out of the vision again to tell you what that meant. John had, we were dating and it was spring. His mom had given him a bouquet for me. So on the way home, I'm saying, woe is me, I'm feeling bad, I'm, all my circumstances. And the lily of the valley were right beside me and they began to waft the fragrance. The Lord spoke to me and he said, Carol, the lily of the valley don't grow on the mountaintops. They only grow in valleys. When you're in a valley, I'll have my lilies there for you. So back into the vision, Jesus handed me the bouquet of flowers, and we just had a wonderful time in this beautiful meadow, laughing, talking about things that we've shared over the years. We are just like children um, playing. We crossed our arms and swung around. All right, so here we are yet again. Another woman with a visit from Fabio Jesus. And, and of course, you know, there's no reverence for Jesus. There's no awe. There's no fear, no elevation. You know, it's just me and Jesus walking through lily fields. We're, we're holding hands and laughing. And we're tickling each other because, you know, Jesus loves me best. And he's my best boyfriend. 
So we hold hands and all that stuff. And, you know, these fake visions are perverted and sick. And they're wrong. So anyway, just real quick, pointing this out. Here we are again. Let's continue to listen. Laugh for a long time. And then finally he said to me, Carol, can I have the bouquet back? I went, hmm. You know, girls don't like to give bouquets back, guys, in case you just a heads up. But anyway, I gave it back to him kind of hesitantly. And he began to go around and pick up all different color flowers, red ones, yellow ones, purple ones, white ones, and began to make them into a wreath. And in that wreath, he placed the lily of the valley. And then he put it on my head. And out of nowhere came a long white wedding veil. You know, there's always a pattern here if you pay attention. And it's always that Jesus serves these women. Here in Carol's story, she's got Jesus walking through flowers and picking flowers for her, making a flower crown or whatever it's called. And so they always have Jesus doing stuff for them. It's not the creation worshiping Jesus and bringing him flowers or gifts or something. No, no, it's Jesus who's picking flowers for her and making this flower crown for her because, well, she's the one that's awesome, right? But they, they tell the story and said, oh, Jesus was so nice and he did so much stuff for me. And then she looks up and she says, whoa, I'm wearing a wedding dress and look at this long veil. and." Because, you know, me me and Jesus are getting married. Isn't, wasn't it amazing? And it's real. And, hey, girls, don't you wish you were me? It, it's just sick. It is just sick and carnal and twisted. But anyway, let's let Carol finish here. Because I'm sure it's going to get more real, right? Scene changed. I know I'm walking. I had my hand over... Jesus' arm, we're walking down the streets, and I'm kind of looking around thinking, I don't know where we are. I don't recognize any of this. But there were people along the way, and they were cheering, and I thought to look down, and I went, oh my goodness, I'm in heaven. I'm walking on the streets of gold. Ah, I married Jesus. Oh, good grief, right? Good grief. I married Jesus. Good grief. What can I possibly say about that? This is demented. And as soon as I thought that, scene changed again. And there was this massive banquet hall. I mean, I couldn't see to the end of it. It was huge. And the tables were all set, beautiful linens, beautiful china, flowers, candelabras. Everything was ready. And, and then he came up to me and he said, can I have the first dance, Carol? Now go back, Jesus. So in the vision, Jesus came up and asked me for the first dance. And I thought, yeah, that's my answer to my prayer, is a hug from Jesus. And as we began to dance, I thought, oh, oh dear, my wedding veil's too long to dance. And then all these little birds came, little cardinals and blue jays and sparrows and they picked up my wedding veil and i danced with jesus all right so as carol's headed out to dance with fabio jesus who is not the jesus of the bible she realizes uh oh i've got a problem my veil is much too long and awesome for me to dance with fabio jesus oh no what am i going to do well, just then, all the little birds came, and the birds grabbed the veil, and, you know, Lucky Carol, she was able, you know, to, to unload that veil on the birds, and therefore she was able to go out and dance with Fabio Jesus. So, uh, problem solved, and they all lived happily ever after. Now, does that sound familiar? The birds, the veil, does that sound familiar? Let me show you something. All right, so this is a clip from Cinderella, the cartoon, and by golly, the slipper fits, right? So what does that mean? Well, ring the bells. It's a joyous day. Cinderella is going to marry the prince, or in this case, 
Carol is going to marry Fabio Jesus. And what do you see here? Well, look, there's little birdies. They're carrying the, uh, the veil, just like Carol and Fabio Jesus. Again, not the Jesus of the Bible. Is this just twisted? Isn't this a little bit sick, a little bit disturbing, or a lot of it disturbing? So the absurdity that we see here in the end times with storytellers and those that would tell, I would call this unholy stories, unholy stories that paint Jesus in an unbiblical fashion, right? This is not our Jesus Christ of the Bible. This is twisted and demented. I know I keep saying that, but it's, it is. It's sick and it needs to be exposed. These people do not care for the truth of Holy Scripture, and therefore they come out with the express intention of influencing people to also participate in fantasy visions and dreams which are unbiblical. And it's just, it's got to stop. So again, worth it to expose Carol Arnott, who is an absolute fraud. Certainly pray for her, uh, but pray that people would come away and wake up from people like Carol, who are trying to sell you a fantasy instead of the true Jesus Christ of our Holy Bible. All right, well, that's going to do it for this week's episode, folks. I sure do thank you for stopping by. Don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe. And remember, do not fear the bully false prophets and the false teachers. Don't fear them. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Read your Bible every day and stand strong in the truth. So until next time, God bless.